Every country is different, and that even includes laws. There are some things you can get away with in one place that you can't get away with elsewhere. So let's pick a random place on the globe and look at its rules and regulations. How does South Korea sound? Good? Yeah, cool. So uh, these are things you can't do in South Korea. Number 20. Speak loudly in public. Korean people are all about keeping harmony, and that applies equally when it comes to a conversation amongst friends or the tone of voice acceptable for public transportation. When it comes to their daily life activities, one of the things they hate the most is confrontation. But if you speak loudly in the bus or the subway, they will not hesitate to call you out on it. This is one of those things that South Korean people just can't accept simply grinds their gears. It's considered extremely rude to be loud in public, and to be honest, the world would be a much quieter and better place if this rule existed everywhere. How many times did a crazy person screaming in the subway disrupt you? or a group of teenagers playing their music like if they were the only ones there. None of that would happen in Korea. On the bus or the subway there, you can even hear a fly pass by. That's how silent and respectful people are of everyone else's inner peace. In any case, you don't have to agree with this matter of public etiquette, but when in Rome, do as the Romans do. In this case, South Korea, of course. Like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now, it's time for the odd topic. Did you know that in South Korea, showing too much skin is considered highly inappropriate, and covering up is considered far more attractive? Yeah, really, it's true. To the point that showing off too much skin is something you really can't do in South Korea. For lots of other countries, revealed skin is more appealing. That's just not the case in South Korea. Isn't it fascinating how different the cultures of the world are? As always, comment down below with the hashtag oddtopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 19. Starting or finishing your meal before an elder. In South Korea, age is a huge thing, especially within the family circle. For example, it's simply unfathomable for a youngster to start digging into their meal before the older members of the family have started, no matter how hungry they might be. That means the oldest person at the table has to always start the meal. And if granddad isn't there yet, well, then everyone has to wait. Those are the rules. The same goes for excusing yourself from the table before the elders have finished. That is also a huge no-no situation. It is customary to wait for the eldest to start and finish eating, and this tradition reflects the basic spirit of Hyo, which is about respecting one's parents and demands the elderly be treated at all times also with the utmost respect. There is another layer to Hyo table manners. Everyone will always give the best food to their parents, no matter how old they are. It's about thinking of your elders first when you see or eat anything good. For example, if you're out and about and come across something that looks delicious, by the rules of Hyo, you would bring some to your grandparents and parents. Number 18. Sit randomly when using public transportation. Public transportation is a very important part of daily life in South Korea, particularly if you live in the big city. More than 60% of adults use the subway every day as their main mode of transportation. The subway system has a nickname, Jeokjeol or Hell Train. And during rush hour, you'll see why it has such a scary name. There are hundreds of people stuck together at the same time. It's like a war down there. So following the proper rules and etiquette is really important so that everyone has a pleasant commute. There are specially designated seats marked for the disabled, the elderly, and pregnant women. Sitting on these seats when you're none of the above is seen as extremely rude and disrespectful. And honestly, your chances of being yelled at if you do so are quite high. Usually, there are the bright pink seats at the edge of each row of seats the ones that are the closest to the gates so the vulnerable person can exit the train faster. That way, they don't have to pass through a mass of people to get off at their stop. These rules are there for a reason, so that everyone has access to public transportation and the people that are in perfect health have a way of making things easier for those experiencing some difficulty. Number 17. Giving or receiving with one hand. 
If you're not from South Korea, this might seem very bizarre to you, but every culture is different. In their culture, it's all about the little gestures that mean the world to them. For example, whether you're giving a gift, receiving a gift from someone else, or even shaking a person's hand, it's customary to always do so not only with just one hand, but with both your hands. If you only use one hand, South Korean people will get extremely offended, and for good reason. Using both hands is basically a sign of the utmost respect. When you only use one hand, you're basically telling them that you don't respect them, and that would offend anyone, let's be honest. A similar rule exists for passing or receiving food or drink. You should always do so with your right hand while your left hand supports your forearm or your wrist. These are small gestures that basically transmit a message without words. You're telling the other person that you see them as an equal or as someone more important than yourself, like an elder or your boss, for instance. And honestly, these little tweaks are quite easy to get used to once you get immersed in the culture and everyone around you is doing the same thing. Number 16. Wear revealing clothing. Every culture in the world has their own definition of what's considered indecent. In some indigenous cultures, showing your breasts as a woman is totally normal. On the other hand, in Western cultures, this would be quite a rebellious statement. So let's see what's considered indecent in South Korea. For them, it's exposed shoulders, and what they consider even worse, a bare back. A woman exposing her shoulders or her back is considered a sex worker, or a woman who just has no respect for herself. A plunging neckline is also very badly seen and considered as vulgar. It might seem like quite an archaic view of women's fashion options, something that the rest of the world has evolved out of, but each country is different, and for example, in South Korea, you can't really show your shoulder, but on the other hand, you can show as much leg as you want. Super mini skirts and super mini shorts are very fashionable at the moment. South Korean women love to wear skirts. Some of them pair them with socks, with leggings, or they'd simply wear them with boy shorts underneath. With the modernization of the country, however, the fashion rules are beginning to be more liberal and flexible, especially after so many female K-pop bands are starting to see huge international success. Number 15. Refusing Drink with an Elder this custom might be a bit dangerous sometimes if the elder likes to drink a lot. But jokes aside, if an elder offers you a shot of soju, you can never, ever turn it down. If you don't like drinking at all, you can sometimes replace the soju with water. They look exactly the same anyway, but the idea is that you can't refuse the gesture. Again, in South Korea, everything is about showing respect, and turning down a drink is very rude and impolite. When someone older or more important than you, like your boss, offers you a shot of soju, they're trying to bring you into the group. They're telling you that you're appreciated. So turning that down would be like insulting someone who just gave you the nicest compliment. There isn't anything more ill-mannered than that. But don't worry, soju might look exactly like vodka, but it's actually way less strong. Typically, soju will have between 20 and 24% alcohol, so it won't even burn when you drink it. Traditional soju is made from a blend of rice and grains, so there's also an ancestral custom behind offering someone a shot of the beverage. And you don't want to disrespect such an old tradition. Number 14. Leave your chopsticks stuck in rice. Yeah, leaving your chopsticks upright stuck in your bowl of rice is a big no-no in South Korea. And the reason is quite simple. South Korean culture is extremely superstitious. So what's the link between superstition and a bowl of rice, you might ask? Well, an upright chopstick looks exactly like the incense they burn at funerals. So you get the idea. Who wants to be reminded of their beloved lost loved ones while they eat a meal? Nobody. That's who. In South Korea, they also use spoons, but not like the traditional Chinese spoons. Here, they look closer to the Western spoons, except with a longer and narrower handle. They're basically a hybrid between a chopstick and a Western spoon. But beware. You can't stick your spoon in the rice either. Well, you can, but then you'll unwillingly be taking part in an ancestral rite for your dead ancestors. Whatever you do, your bowl of rice must be utensil-free at all times, or you would not only be disrespecting South Korean culture, but also the dead family members of the people you're sharing a table with. And nobody likes foreigners coming into their country and not following basic table manners when dining altogether. 
Number 13. Throw toilet paper in the toilet. As strange as it might sound, most places in South Korea do not allow flushing tissue down the drain. Instead, people are expected to throw the toilet paper into a garbage can inside the bathroom. But this rule has nothing to do with superstition or tradition, not this time. It actually involved the old infrastructure and the plumbing of the buildings and houses. If you flush toilet paper down the drain, you will most likely cause problematic clogs and blockages that are quite hard to repair and deal with. Also, the toilets there have very little drainage holes compared to the ones you might find in the West. So if you throw too much tissue in there, it simply won't go down. For this reason, more and more places in South Korea are actually hanging their piping system. I mean, let's face it, having a garbage can full of used toilet paper isn't the best way to go, and it certainly isn't very sanitary. And knowing how much South Korean people praise cleanliness, it's logical that they don't like that system either. But to change the entire sewer system of such a big city like Seoul, it would take years of very hard work from hundreds of workers. So for now, most people are stuck with their little trash cans. Number 12. Mix different types of trash. Nowadays, it's very ordinary to separate your trash. There's the recycling bin, the glass bin, and some people even go so far as to do their own compost. But in South Korea, this practice has been going on for a very long time. They use a system called Jongnyeonggi, I hope I didn't butcher that, and it assures the most effective collection of garbage waste and how to reuse the natural resources properly. The red bin is designated for cardboard and paper products. It might sound strange, but in South Korea, plastic metal, and glass are usually mixed together in the blue bin. But careful, you're supposed to take off the caps of your glass bottles and place them delicately in the bin. If you make a noise, a neighbor will definitely come out and reprimand you. For food waste, they actually have special plastic bags that you can find at any convenience store, and they're usually green or yellow. If you don't have enough food waste to fill a bag, it's customary to freeze your food waste until you have enough to fill it. And everything else goes in a general waste bag that you can also find at any supermarket. But what's curious is that every district has its own design of trash bags, and if you move to another district, you can't bring the old bags with you. You can only use them at the district you bought them from. Number 11. Think everything worth seeing is in Seoul. This one goes for any country that's a major tourist destination. Not everything interesting to see is in the capital city, and South Korea is not the exception to that rule. Usually, when people think about the country, the first thing that comes to their minds is Seoul and all the amazing things to do and see there. But let's not forget that South Korea is a big country with a very rich and ancestral culture and many wonderful things to do outside of the city. The latest tourism trend is called framping, which is a perfect combination between farming and camping. It started rising in popularity over the past few years, right about when people started to get a little bit fed up with concrete jungles and an overall design desire to go back to the basics started to settle within society. With framping, you can truly experience an immersion of authentic Korean culture with the local people and one of the most beautiful outskirts destinations in the country. You'll learn about their centuries-old traditions and customs, you'll eat genuine Korean food, and you'll get to see how they go about their day-to-day -day life. And isn't that what tourism's all about? Number 10. No Trash Cans in Korea, there are literally no trash cans anywhere in the streets. So if you buy something to eat that has a wrapper, get ready to put that wrapper in your pocket all day until you get back to your house or hotel. Usually, what people do is they carry around little plastic bags in their purse or backpack to put all their waste in. Especially if you're eating a piece of fruit like a banana or an apple, you'll be very thankful to be able to put it somewhere where it's not going to make a mess. Another trick is to go to a public restroom or nearby subway station where you can find lots of trash cans to dispose your waste at. But be careful, littering is extremely bad in South Korea, and people will definitely reprimand you if they catch you doing it. If you have big garbage, you can uh, call 
and reserve and you have to buy stickers from the convenience store. Sometimes they'll even yell at you if you don't pick your trash right back up. Korean people are very proud of how clean their streets are, and they are nothing short of perfectionists. So walking around their beautiful capital city and having a look at trash cans would just make the experience a bit less magical. So all trash cans are therefore kind of hidden underground or behind doors. Number 9. It is forbidden to wear blue jeans. This topic is about South Korea's neighbor to the north. Yeah, we're talking about the mysterious and closed country of North Korea, which also happens to be a communist dictatorship led by Supreme Leader Kim Jong-un. In this country, jeans are very expensive, and if you have enough money to afford them, by all means, you can wear them. But remember, they have to be black, because blue jeans are categorically prohibited. And the reason why is because, as we already said, North Korea is a communist country, and they consider blue jeans to be a symbol of imperialistic capitalism, which is their number one arch enemy. If you're a tourist wearing blue denim, nobody will say anything about it, but you won't be able to visit the Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il memorials, both of whom were previous supreme leaders. You simply won't be allowed in if you're wearing your regular blue jeans. North Korea has been a closed country for a long time, and everything that's reminiscent of Western culture is absolutely forbidden. People can only cut their hair a certain way, dress a certain way, and even behave a certain way. Everything is decided by the supreme leader, and his words are law. It's not a very safe place to travel to. Not that they just let anybody in. Number 8. Don't be square and don't give in fours. Have you noticed how in the Western world, the number 13 is a symbol of bad luck? So much so that in many buildings, you will not find a floor or room with the number 13 associated with it. And Friday the 13th is a synonym of terrible and bloody things. Well, in South Korea, the bad luck number is not 13, but the number 4. The reason behind it is pure superstition, as the Korean word for four sounds very similar to the Chinese character for death. In some buildings, they've replaced the fourth floor with the F floor, so it goes one, two, three, F, five, six, seven, etc. Of course, not everyone in South Korea is superstitious, but a lot of people still are. For example, some Koreans won't buy a car if the license plate contains the number four. They'll simply buy a different one. The same goes for gifts. If you're invited to a Korean household and you don't want to show up empty-handed, feel free to bring with you some pastries, but never four of them. Either bring three or five or six, just not four. They will take it as a bad omen and will probably not invite you ever again, if they still talk to you, of course. Number seven. Owning a Bible is illegal. We've covered that North Korea is a communist country, but South Korea is a liberal constitutional republic, so you can imagine how difficult and troubled the relations between the two Koreas can be. And unfortunately, in North Korea, Christianity is forbidden, so much so that if they catch one of their citizens practicing the religion, they will throw them in jail. And not just any jail, if they catch them with a Bible in their possession, that could land them 15 years of hard labor in a prison camp. And those places are just as horrible as concentration camps. In the worst case scenarios, they can also get the death sentence. That is why South Korean people living near the border have been secretly trying to launch Bibles to their brothers up north without their government's knowledge. They were launching balloons with Bibles inside them, as well as bottles with pieces of scripture inside the sea. They were going through great lengths to try to spread the word of Jesus Christ. But because it was creating animosities with the North Korean government, South South Korea has banned illegal Bible launches. I mean, let's not forget that North Korea has nuclear warheads. In other words, you don't want to piss them off. Not too bad, anyway. Number 6. Don't Eat Dogs it has been a long-running stereotype that in some Asian cultures, people will eat dogs and cats. But in some cases, this is actually true and also devastating. If you are ever presented with a dish called bosun tang soup, I would recommend you pass on it. Bosun tang soup is actually dog soup. 
Yeah, there's dog meat in the soup. It's a very popular delicacy, and in South Korea, there's a specific market for it. But what you might not know is how they keep and treat the dogs that end up in the soup. Keep in mind, these dogs are bred for one purpose and one purpose only, their meat which means they're not cared for as a beloved family pet. They're put in cages where they remain their entire lives. And that isn't even the worst part. South Korean people believe that the more the animal suffers before its death, the better the soup will taste. So they basically brutally beat them and torture the poor creatures to death. Sometimes the procedure can take hours. There are no words for what these dogs have to go through in their last moments on this earth. So unless you want to try a soup made out of man's best friend's tears and pain, yeah, better stick to the famous Korean barbecue instead. Number 5. Never Dine By Yourself Dining is a social activity in South Korea, and that's why many restaurants have their menu designed for large groups of people. That means that they serve very large portions of food. Even the side dishes are fit for a group of people. And also, most restaurants can't or won't adjust their servings to smaller portions, and for that reason, they simply don't allow single diners at their establishments. Some of them do it because their establishment was made and designed for large tables, and they don't have the accommodations necessary for just one person, and also maybe they don't have small plates. It might also be because they're used to doing the recipes in large quantities, and they wouldn't know how to cook the dishes in a smaller version. Usually, South Korean people go out for dinner after a long week of work with their entire group of colleagues, or maybe with their entire social circle, to celebrate something. But when I say that the portions in these restaurants are big, I actually mean massively huge. So going to have dinner on your own would be a waste of good food and money, and probably not a very nice experience since everywhere around you there would be people having fun in large groups. Number 4. Don't Sing a Whole Playlist Karaoke, or how it's more commonly known in South Korea, norebang, is one of the most popular fun nighttime activities for those looking to have a good and fun time. You can rent whole rooms to have some intimacy with your friends, because let's be honest, not everybody can sing. Some karaoke's have themes and sparkling lights everywhere. They're a place to have fun and let loose. But like in anything else in South Korea, there are customary rules to follow, or you might come across as inconsiderate and rude. For example, you must give a chance to every member of the group to sing a song of their own. So one thing not to do is to enter a whole playlist and hog the microphone the entire time. Also, don't worry about someone not singing on key. Korean people enjoy the experience. It isn't about entering America's Got Talent. Aside from always taking turns and respecting everyone's time in the limelight, try to remember that karaoke is about joy and fun and letting go of the stress of life. So try to always choose upbeat songs, nothing slow or sad. Otherwise, you could kill the mood for everyone else and you might not get invited again. All that said, you should be able to enjoy your karaoke night to the fullest. Number 3. Never Whistle at Night are you able to whistle? Not everybody is, but those who can, they'll always tell you the same thing. Whistling is super fun. It's a great way to occupy yourself when you're bored, and it can even help give you better concentration sometimes as well. Whistling is always a sign of something good and positive. It's linked to music and to expressing your happiness. And for those who don't have great voices or can't sing on key, whistling is the perfect way of being part of the action without really having to destroy a song by singing. Sorry. But in South Korea, whistling at nighttime is considered a gesture that can bring very bad luck in the form of ghouls and ghosts. Yes, Korean people believe that if you whistle when it's dark outside, you'll be attracting dangerous creatures that could potentially harm you. As we've already said, South Korean people are very superstitious and they are quite afraid of the mythological creatures that supposedly roam the world during the night. If they hear whistling when it's dark outside, they will genuinely be scared, and making someone have a bad time is just very rude. Number 2. Never use red ink when writing a name. 
On this topic, we have, yet again, superstition playing a huge role. In South Korea, it's considered a very bad omen to write someone's name in red ink because traditionally, red is the color they used for writing the names of deceased members of their families in funeral banners and family registers. So you can imagine that writing the name of an alive person in red ink could be considered as an incredibly bad omen, almost like you're wishing that person to die, or at the very least, that you wish bad luck upon the person in question, and you really don't want to mess with that sentiment. It would be very disrespectful towards Korean culture. This is a categorical rule, but there are a few exceptions to it. For instance, you are allowed to add your name as a stamp in red ink. Then there's no issue at all. Also, when a document has to be verified, or if a document has to be registered by the government, then you can use a stamp or a red wax seal stamp as well. So if you ever take a business trip to South Korea, keep this in mind and try to have a black ink pen always on you so everything goes smoothly. Number 1. Never blow your nose Have you ever seen a Korean person blowing their nose? I bet you haven't. How do I know? Well, because in South Korea, blowing your nose in public or in front of people is considered extremely rude. So logically, you've probably never seen anyone in South Korea blowing their nose. If you feel under the weather and you happen to have a runny nose, it's customary to excuse yourself to the restroom and blow your nose there so that nobody else can see you. If your nose is going out of control and you don't have access to a bathroom, you can always just use your handkerchief or a tissue to dab your nose with it. Or you can even simply go into a room where you can be alone and blow your nose there. It doesn't have to be a bathroom. But why is it considered so rude? Well, that's the only reason. There isn't any superstition involved, just the fact that having to sit through someone blowing their nose is actually very unpleasant and a bit disgusting, to be honest. So refrain from doing so in South Korea, especially in a dining area or during a meal. A piece of advice, if your nose gets runny after eating spicy things, try to avoid dishes with gochujang, also known as super hot chili paste. As you can see, South Korea is a country with a very rich culture and very specific customs, and everything seems to revolve around respect or the lack thereof. What about you? Which one of these customs would you find impossible to follow? Tell us about it. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!